So in your division was, like you said, Satyev, mm -hmm. Vaisa Satyev. Um, that guy is special. He's very special. So um, that would be my other guy that you asked earlier who I enjoyed watching. And that was a guy I, again, it was kind of after the fact because it was hard to access footage, but he, yeah, he was a lot of fun to watch. What do you think made him great? Uh, a lot he, of people talked about him as potentially one of the great, oh, yeah, greatest ever. Absolutely. I mean, six and so he won six and three, six worlds, nine, uh, six worlds, three Olympics, nine total, which there's only one or two people above that. Um, so again, it was it was hard to watch any live footage of him, but from what I've seen, it, his his feel is different. He was just ahead of his time in the feel and the touch he had for certain moves and different things, because obviously physically he's kind of un, unimposing. Mm -hmm. He's um, you know taller and skinnier, which is you know it, it it can work in wrestling, but it is by less represented. Um, yeah, he was special. So good. Do you uh, take any inspiration from? Let's talk about Dagestan in general. What do you, what do you think makes those wrestlers great? Yeah, it's fascinating. Um, I, have you read the book, The Talent Code? Yeah. It's great. And that kind of talks about these talent hotspots all around the world. And so now, obviously with our wrestling academies, we try to take some lessons from the, that and apply it. I got to assume, they didn't cover Dagestan in, in that book specifically, but I got to assume a lot of the same principles uh, that are in that book apply to Dagestan and wrestling, right? They did South Korea and... Um, women's golf, they did Curacao and baseball, right? They picked a lot of these other places that were really elite. Uh, I think it was maybe Moscow and women's tennis also. Um, and I, so I think all these things that make any group great or organization is probably the same things that's happening there. Well, the hardship, I mean, what for, for, is there something specific about wrestling that can create so many great champions? Is it From that area, so obviously they're all, they all, love it. like it's a big deal that wrestling is specifically is a big deal there you know they do sambo also obviously um so that's part of it is a lot of the kids are doing it they obviously are rough tumble tough yeah. tough life Getting um, a lot of fights and then i think that also that a lot of them it, it is a way out right there the the elite level athletes in that part of the world from my understanding are really well compensated compared to what the average person makes and they're treated really well so people see it as a way out whereas like and then honestly if America is getting better, but in 2008, the reason I went to do MMA was because I didn't want to be poor my whole life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It sucked. It's like, well, I don't want to make $20,000 for the next 48 years, so I'm going to go do something else. If I could have made, even, and I didn't need to be rich, right? If I could have made $100,000 or $70,000 wrestling, I probably, probably would have kept wrestling. Um, so I think I think it's those factors. I And obviously now they have a really like, uh, a bunch of really good people in one area, so there's probably and it's been going on for a long time. So there's probably been a bunch of like adults and coaches that are coming back and helping that progress. So yeah, a lot of those things that happen. So I'm definitely going to travel there to talk to him because I can speak Russian. It oh, makes nice. it makes it very, um, makes me uniquely qualified to- uh, Absolutely. To <laughs> My brother can speak a little bit of Russian. Your brother can? Yeah. Okay, like yeah. a little bit like uh, two squares and- no, 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 like he would- Oh man, don't don't make me oversell. I think he would be able to have a conversation with you. I think. Okay. okay. Probably not like you. <laughs> what's the uh, What's the reason he knows Russian? He I don't know why he got obsessed with languages, and so his college degree is actually um, what do they call interdis, where you have three minors. So he had a minor in Russian, a minor in Spanish, and maybe Japanese. I'm I'm messing up. It's definitely it's Russian and Spanish are for sure. I don't know what the third one is. No, but yeah, Dagestan, it's its really fascinating. But the the, uh, the emphasis on technique, the lighter drilling, like they don't yeah. really go super hard. Yeah, and I only spent a couple, so I was there, I was in Vladikavkaz in 2008, that was where the World Cup was. We had to train there for like two days afterwards. So um, I didn't get to dig deep, did get to dig deep into what was going on or anything. But yeah, I mean, I think sparring has, uh, sparring is, very beneficial for wrestling. Um, not like sparring in MMA is we fight, mm -hmm. right? Sparring in wrestling is, so I always just describe it to be really simple. Uh, if we're drilling, it's relatively 0% resistance. If we're going as hard as we can, that's 100%. Mm -hmm. There's all this gray area in the middle, that's sparring, right? And so, you know, if you have a good relationship, like, you know, especially in college, me and my brother, we could just go and we, we know where each other's at. 
we don't even have to talk about it, right? But like in my wrestling club, I'll say, okay, hey, I want you guys to go 50% in this position. Or I want the high crotch guy, I want him to shoot, and this is for him, so I want him to go 70. And the defensive guy, I want you to go 40. So you're not you're not supposed to be trying to win here. You're mm-hmm. going to go a little later. I want you to give, give him some looks, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so I think, I think it has really taken hold in America. I think it's really beneficial for success. And I think that's, I mean, America's doing better than we've ever done 